Hello, and welcome to this edition of Cancer TV News. I'm your host, Belinda Pinello. This broadcast will review new techniques to catch breast cancer early, olive oil's ability to kill breast cancer, how confusing risk information may lead patients to make poor treatment choices, and alternating mammograms and MRIs for high-risk women. Annual mammograms have long been the standard approach to detecting breast cancer. Over 25 million women a year get mammograms. However, mammograms miss 5% to 17% of cancers. Plus, additional screening methods may be necessary for some women. Recent innovations in medical imaging are making it easier to detect cancers in women with dense breast tissue, family history, or other risk factors. We'll review a few methods here. MRIs use magnet and radio waves to produce cross-sectional images of the body, and there are machines designed especially for breast MRIs. Along with an annual mammogram, this is recommended for certain women at high risk. Digital mammography captures images electronically, which can be viewed on a computer screen rather than through a traditional x-ray. The doctor can adjust the magnification or brightness on the computer screen to see possible problematic tissue better. The National Cancer Institute found that digital mammography was more accurate in finding cancers in women with dense breasts and those younger than 50. While the test isn't available at all imaging centers now, it should be more widely available in the near future. Molecular breast imaging involves taking a short-acting radioactive tracer that travels through the body and reveals cancer cells. This test is good for higher-risk women and shows fewer false positives than mammograms. A study at the Mayo Clinic found this test to find three times more cancers than traditional mammography. Women should know their options and talk with their doctors. In related news, a study found that alternating mammography and MRI may be best for high-risk women. MRI alternated with mammography at six-month intervals can detect breast cancers not identified by mammography alone, a research team from the University of Texas at MD Anderson Cancer Center reported. An MRI is known to be more accurate than mammography with a 71 to 100 percent accuracy compared to a 16 to 40 percent accuracy, respectively. At MD Anderson, researchers decided to use imaging every six months, mammography first and then six months later to do a breast MRI exam, followed six months later with mammogram, then in another six months, another MRI. The MRI picked up the majority of cancers, while mammography picked up only three of nine. This suggests that the MRI picks up small lesions before a mammogram can detect them. In other news, the benefits of a diet that includes olive oil have been long reported. However, now a compound found in the oil has been reported to cause cancer cells death. Phytochemicals are contained in high quality olive oil. A team of researchers said that phenols found in extra virgin olive oil stop a gene called HER2 that causes breast cancer. Lesser grades of olive oil lose the beneficial substance when they are treated with heat. The olive oils were tested on breast cancer cells in a lab as opposed to on people and at a much higher concentration than one would normally eat through food. However, the findings may lead to creating new drugs to fight breast cancer. And finally, confusing risk information may lead breast cancer patients to make poor treatment choices. A new study at the University of Michigan reports that tools designed to help patients are too complicated for many to understand. A commonly used tool that helps estimate the risk of women's breast cancer returning after surgery doesn't do a good job explaining risks to patients. Therefore, the women may not find the tool helpful when deciding whether or not to have chemotherapy. The tool presents in graph form the four options, hormonal therapy alone, chemotherapy alone, both hormonal and chemotherapy, or no treatment at all. The two choices that are most beneficial to women are hormone alone, which has few side effects and large benefits, and hormone treatment with chemotherapy. By showing all four options together rather than isolating those two, 
patients don't focus on the most significant choice, whether or not to add chemotherapy to hormone treatment. In the current form, only 51% of women correctly understood how much their chance of surviving would increase if they took chemotherapy. When women were shown a simpler graph with only the two key options, 65% were accurate. When the information was presented in a different kind of visual graph, 77% correctly reported the benefit of chemotherapy. Researchers noted that even when patients are given the information they need, they have to be able to understand it well enough to make the right choice. Doctors need to spend less time explaining the numbers and more time talking about what those numbers mean. This year, over 184,000 Americans will be diagnosed with breast cancer. That ends this episode of Cancer TV News. Thank you for joining us and please visit us next time.